we have been uh, talking about the general characters of mammalia the remaining characteristics of mammalia the most important points i'll put before you we have done about uh, the respiratory system blood vascular system excretory system nervous system reproductive system exoskeleton of mammalia we have already finished here now then the digestive system modifications in digestive system here now in uh, most of the mammals teeth are diphyodont hecodont and heterodont diphyodont hecodont and heterodont monofyod and dentition is noticed in marsupials monofyod and dentition is noticed in marsupials homodont dentition is noticed in cetaceans so homodont dentition is noticed in cetacea monofyod dentition is noticed in marsupials except this in all other mammals you know teeth are diphyodont thecodont and heterodont you know now on the basis of the nature of cusps that is grinding edges teeth are divided into different types in mammals you now like supposing in human being you now it is called bunodont dentition bunodont dentition is present in humans and apes because the cusps are round cusps you know the teeth have round cusps you know so you call it bunodont dentition in human and apes you know then uh, lophodont dentition lophodont dentition is noticed in elephants that is proboscidea where the cusps are long and fused cusps are long and fused you know that is called lophodont dentition you find in elephants proboscidea in proboscideans you know. then uh, selenodont dentition selenodont dentition is found in cattle sheep and all that where the cusps are very large you know cusps are large meant for mastication you know the crown part is also large you know the selenodont dentition you find in uh, ungulates okay ungulates have selenodont type of dentition then cecodont dentition cecodont dentition where the cusps are pointed they are meant for tearing the flesh you know pointed dagger shaped cusps are present in case of cecodont cecodont dentition is found in carnivores cecodont dentition is found in carnivores cecodont dentition is found in carnivores and in carnivores the first molar and last premolar and the first molar last premolar and the first molar they have dagger shaped uh, cusps you know those dagger shaped cusps of last uh, uh, premolar and first molar of ug and lj are called carnassial teeth in carnivores you know the last premolar of uj and the first molar of lj the last premolar of upper jaw and first molar of lower jaw they have got dagger shaped cusps you know those teeth are called carnassial teeth you know and some mammals you know teeth are entirely absent for instance you take prototheria in prototheria okay and edenata prototheria and edenata edenates are the shrews you know okay edenata includes uh, the ant eaters like sloths you call them you know sloths ant eater mammals called sloths you know belong to edenata in prototheria and edenata teeth are absent that is edentulous jaws are present edentulous jaws are present in prototheria and edenata you know and in all herbivore mammals you now uh, the canines are absent the gap that appears due to the absence of canines is called diastema the gap that appears due to the absence of 
is called diastema. For instance, you take rabbit here now, the canines are absent, the gap that appears between successive teeth due to the absence of canines can be called diastema. You know. And in certain mammals you now, persistent pulp teeth are present here. You know. That is, the teeth grow throughout life here. You know. Like for instance, you take incisors in rabbits here you now. Incisors in rabbits grow throughout life here. You know. Incisors in rabbit, canines in wild boars, canines in wild boars, canines in wild boars you now. Then in case of premolars, in case of elephants you now, they grow throughout life. The teeth which grow throughout life are called persistent pulp teeth or rootless teeth you know. All these teeth have broad root you know, with a wide aperture at the tip you know. As a result, the nutrients are supplied throughout the life and such teeth are called persistent pulp teeth or rootless teeth. Example, incisors in rabbit you now, canines in wild boars and premolars in elephants. They grow throughout life and they, that such teeth are called persistent pulp teeth or rootless teeth here. If the crown part of the tooth, in some mammals you now, teeth grow throughout life, the teeth which grow throughout life are called persistent pulp teeth or rootless teeth you know, I have already given examples. Then in certain mammals you now, the crown part is long, crown is long, root is short. Crown is long, root is short, such teeth are called hypsodont teeth. Hypsodont teeth. And if the crown part is sharp and root is long, such teeth are called brachiodont teeth. If the crown part is short and root is long, call them brachiodont. Like in uh, ungulates, cows, buffaloes and all that, ungulates mostly the teeth are brachiodont teeth here. You know. Whereas in carnivores like squirrels and all that here you now, you find hypsodont teeth here. You know. Carnivore mammals like squirrels, okay, then tigers and all that here you now, crown part is long, root is short here you now. So, hypsodont teeth are present in carnivores while brachiodont teeth are present in ungulates. You know. In human being you now, the dental formula of permanent teeth is 2123 by 2123 into 2, that is the dental formula of permanent teeth here now. The dental formula of milk teeth is 2102 by 2102 into 2. That is premolars are entirely absent and instead of 3 molars only 2 molars are present. This is the dental formula of milk teeth and this is the dental formula of permanent teeth here now. In mammals here now, in certain mammals like ungulates you now and uh, even uh, okay yeah arshodactyls and perissodactyls ungulates you now chambered stomach is present you now where the stomach consists of rumen reticulum omasum and abomasum among these Abomasum is the true stomach. Abomasum is the true stomach and all the other parts are the modification of esophagus. And rumen is also called paunch. Reticulum is also called honeycomb. Omasum is also called xaltarium. Abomasum is also called rennet. Rumen, commonly called paunch, reticulum, honeycomb, omasum, xaltarium, abomasum is commonly called rennet. So, among these, abomasum is the true stomach. The other three are the modified esophagus, you know. We, they, they, here, among these, mostly the rumen and the reticulum, both of them help in digestion of cellulose by harboring certain symbiotic bacteria, by providing shelter to certain symbiotic bacteria. Then the mammals alone here now, in the intestinal region, 
certain scattered diffuse type of lymphoid tissue is present. The diffuse type of lymphoid tissue is called Peyer's patches. They are found exclusively in mammals, not in other vertebrates. You know, liver may be five lobed or four lobed. You know, with a, a gall bladder. Okay, then uh, stomach is divided into three chambers. You know, in other mammals like cardiac stomach, fundic stomach, and pylori stomach. You know. So these are the important modifications in the digestive system of mammals. Now we shall talk about the classification part of mammalia. Now, class mammalia is divided into two subclasses. You know, subclass Prototheria and subclass Theria. Subclass Theria is divided into two infra classes. Infra class Metatheria and infra class Eutheria or Placentalia. Subclass Prototheria, Subclass Theria. Theria is divided into two infra classes, Metatheria and Eutheria. Now we shall talk about the important characteristics of Prototheria. Subclass Prototheria, Roma called Prototherians unfinished mammals. as they exhibit both reptilian characters and mammalian characters and they happen to be connecting link between prototheria uh, connecting link between mammalia and reptilia they are known as unfinished mammals you know then uh, it includes a single order order monotremata order monotremata and the reptilian and mammalian characters are The reptilian characters of Prototheria Number 1 Absence of ear pinna Unlike other mammals you now, ear pinna is absent because even reptilia also there is no external ear or ear pinna Even here ear pinna is absent Number 1 Number 2 T shaped interclavicle is present in the pectoral girdle Like reptiles they too have a T shaped interclavicle in the pectoral girdle Number three, well developed coracoid. Coracoid is well developed in pectoral girdle. Like reptiles, you know, the pectoral girdle consists of well developed coracoids, but other mammals, you know, coracoids are reduced, epi and pre coracoids are absent, and coracoids are reduced. The entire pectoral girdle is made of only scapula, but here, apart from scapula, even the coracoids are also present here now. The next is testis or abdominal. The next character ribs are single headed. Single headed ribs are present unlike that of mammals you now. The next one is megalocetal eggs. And they are shelled cledoic eggs as you find in reptilia and the apes. You know, the next one is miroblastic cleavage. Miroblastic cleavage is noticed here now. The next character is absence of epiphysis. The vertebrae do not have lateral thickenings called epiphysis, absence of epiphysis. The next one is absence of carpus callosum. Absence of carpus callosum. The next you can write egg laying characteristics. So, 
So all these are reptilian characters are prototheria, absence of ear pinna, T-shaped interclavicle, well developed coracoids, testis abdominal, single headed ribs are present, megalistal eggs and cladoic eggs, miroblastic cleavage, absence of epiphysis, absence of carpus callosum, then egg laying character. All of them are reptilian characters, you know, they said to be the reptilian characters. Then the mammalian characters of the mammalian character, the unique mammalian characters are present, that's why they are placed under class mammalia. Number one, presence of hair. Number two, presence of four chambered stomach. A four chambered heart with the left systemic presence of single dentary in the lower jaw presence of single dentary in the lower jaw presence of amphiplation vertebrae amphiplation vertebrae presence of diaphragm Presence of four optic lobes. Presence of four optic lobes. Presence of mammary glands. Presence of mammary glands. Absence of RPS. Absence of renal portal system. Presence of enucleated RBCs. Enucleated RBC, they are all the mammalian characteristics, the unique mammalian characteristics of prototherians, you know. Presence of hair, presence of four chambered stomach with left systemic arch, single dentary in the lower jaw, amphiplatia and vertebrae are present, presence of diaphragm, carpora quadrigemina, mammary glands are present, absence of RPS, renal portal system is absent here you now. Enucleated RBCs, they are all the unique mammalian characteristics of prototheria you know. Then apart from this, the prototherians exhibit certain unique characteristics also. I shall put before you those unique characteristics you know. The unique characteristics of prototherians are, number one, they exhibit discontinuous distribution. Number two, Mammary glands are the modified sweat glands. Mammary glands, unlike other mammals, here the mammary glands are the modified sweat glands and they are without teeth and nipple. Without teeth and nipple. Then they exhibit gynecomastism. That is apart from females, males also suckle their young ones, you know, which is called gynecomastism. Then the next unique character is absence of teeth. Jaws are edentulous, absence of teeth, you know, that is also one unique characteristic feature. The next one is simple less coiled cochlea is present. Simple less coiled cochlea is present. The next one is penis is meant for only for passage of urine. Penis is meant for the passage of urine. It doesn't help in it doesn't help in insemination, you know. It is meant for passage of urine. The next you have presence of cloaca. Presence like lower animals you now, presence of cloaca that is also one unique characteristic feature. So discontinued distribution, mammary glands, modified sweat glands, gynecomastism, absence of teeth you now, simple cochlea, penis meant for passage of urine, presence of cloaca, they are all unique characteristics of prototheria you now. The examples for prototheria are number one, techie glasses. This is commonly called spiny anteater.
spiny anteater it is found in australia number 2 duckbill that is ornithorhynchus this ornithorhynchus is commonly called duckbill platypus duckbill platypus you know it develops a pouch called incubatorium during breeding season female develops a pouch called incubatorium during breeding season to carry eggs you know then male has a poisonous spur in the hind limb male has a poisonous spur you know this is also found in australia the next you have zeglasus commonly called pro echidna and this is found in new guinea so techi glasses spiny anteater australia is found it's an anteater you know with a long snout you know then it has got a toilet claw in the hind limb both male and female have toilet claw in the hind limb to clean their hair body hair the next is ornithorhynchus duckbill platypus it develops incubatorium during incubatorium during develop breeding season male has a poisonous spur found in australia zeglasus commonly called pro echidna is found in new guinea techi glasus is also called echidna you know techi glasus is also called echidna this is pro echidna and this is echidna so only represented by only three classes you know uh, three examples that is techi glasus zeglasus and ornithorhynchus you know there are important characteristics of subclass prototheria with reptilian characters mammalian characters and even unique characteristics next you have infra class metatheria infra class metatheria it includes a single order order marsupialia most of them are found in north america that's why north america is also called land of marsupials you now unlike prototheria ear pinna is present in them ear pinna is present vertebrae are with epiphyses vertebrae are with epiphyses vertebrae are with epiphyses ribs are double headed ribs are double headed carpus callosum is present carpus callosum is present then they have got a typical dental formula the dental formula is 5 by 4 1 by 1 3 by 3 and 4 by 4 5 by 4 1 by 1 3 by 3 and 4 by 4 here now last premolar is monophyodont last premolar is monophyodont monophyodont last premolar that is uh, it is it remains permanent here it is not last remaining teeth are last here now last premolar is monophyodont the next one anus and genital aperture okay the anus that is the opening of digestive tract and genital aperture are covered by a common sphincter they don't have cloaca however the anal aperture and genital aperture both of them are uh, covered by a common sphincter another unique character of this penis lies behind scrotum penis is behind scrotum and it is bifid penis is behind scrotum and it is bifid you know and the female has two ovaries two oviducts and two uteri
two ovaries, two oviducts, and two uterine. All of them are paired here now. That's why they are also called didelphidae. That's why they are also called didelphidae here now. Then they have got a placenta. Most of them have chorio-vitelline placenta. Chorio-vitelline placenta. Didelphus has Choreo allantoic placenta. Didelphus has Choreo allantoic placenta and all other marsupials have Choreo vitelline placenta. You know. And they are all viviparous, ovo viviparous mammals. Ovo viviparous mammals where the young ones are born in extremely hapless and tiny condition here now. Then mammary glands are the modified sebaceous glands. Mammary glands are modified sebaceous glands with the teeth. Mammary glands are modified sebaceous glands with the teeth here now. And most of the marsupials have a pouch called marsupium which is supported by epipubic bones. They have got a marsupium which is internally supported by epipubic bones. You know. The examples for metatheria, the important examples for metatheria are Didelphus, commonly called American aposum. Peramilus marsupial bandicoot Thylacinus Tasmanian wolf commonly called Tasmanian wolf Macropus, commonly called kangaroo. Macropus is commonly called kangaroo. Next is Fasco Laractus, Cola Bear, which is commonly referred to as teddy bear found in Australia, teddy bear or cola bear, Fascolomis, Australian gnome bat, Cynolestus, Rhincolestus, Shrew like marsupials, Shrew like marsupials, Cynolestus and Rhincolestus. So, most of them, as you noticed here, are found in Australia. That is why Australia is called land of marsupials, it is not North America. Australia is called land of marsupials. Australia is called land of marsupials. It is except Didelphus. Here you have Didelphus, you know. Then Cynolestus, Rhincolestus. Except them. Rest of them are found in Australia, Tasmania and all that. That is why Australia is called land of marsupials. Whereas North America is known for Eurodils. North America is land of Eurodils, you know. Then among these, you know, Fascolomis, Australian Numbat does not have marsupium, does not have marsupium. You know. And these marsupials and eutherian mammals, both of them exhibit parallel evolution. Both of them are considered as best examples for parallel evolution. You know. This Didelphus is supposed to be the marsupial with the shortest gestation period, it's hardly 13 days you now, uh, okay, with the shortest gestation period, Didelphus. Virginiana, American opossum commonly called, is supposed to have or supposed to exhibit shortest gestation period here now.
Now infra class eutheria. Eutheria is also called placentalia. Eutheria is also called placentalia. All the characters which have studied under mammalia can be made applicable to eutheria. That is starting with they have got exoskeleton in the form of hair here now. In the lower jaw contains a single bone called dentary. The mammary glands are modified sebaceous glands with a, which are with the teeth or nipple here now. Coracoid is reduced, free coracoid and epicoracoid and interclavicle are absent in pectoral girdle. Then uh, the ribs are double headed in all of them. Teeth are thecodont, diphyodont and heterodont in most of them. Then vertebrae are with epiphysis here now, vertebrae are amphiplation. Cochlea is highly coiled here now. They have got both external ear, middle ear and internal ear. Middle ear has the three ear ossicles called MIS, M I S MIS. Then um, fertilization is internal in all of them. It takes place in the fallopian tube. Eggs are microlistal or elistalal. Cleavage is equal holoblastic here now. The eggs are with uh, the embryo develops fetal membranes which slowly transform into placenta. They have got different kinds of placenta here now. Like hemochordial placenta you find in human being and different types of placenta you find in other uh, eutherian mammals you know. Due to presence of well developed placenta they are also called placental you know. Carpus callosum is present connecting the two halves of cerebral hemispheres. Then four optic lobes are present in all of them, carpora, quadrigemina, cloaca is absent. They are all important characteristics of eutheria you know. Then here the students MZ point of view, AFMC and all other exam point of view, you need to even get the orders also by heart you know. Sometimes they are giving questions based even on the orders you know. Some important orders I shall put before you. Arda insectivora. Erinaceous. Commonly called hedgehog and shrew like mammals belong to order insectivora, order edenata, sloths belong to edenata, like you have learnt already coloipus, two tod sloth, bradipus tridactylus, three tod sloth. They all belong to, they are also insectivore mammals and they belong to order Edenata. Insectivora and Edenata, the testes are within the abdomen because of low metabolic rate. The next you have order Folidota. It includes Manis, which is commonly called Pangolin or Scaly Anteater. The next you have Arda, Proboscidea, it includes elephants, Elephas maximus, both Loxodonta africana, African elephant and Indian elephant, both of them belong to Proboscidea. Then you have Arda, Lagomorpha, Lagomorpha includes rabbits and hare. Rabbits and hair belong to Lagomorpha. Then next you have Ardar, Rodentia, Rats, Squirrel and Guinea Pigs. Rats, Rattus Rattus, Squirrel, Phenomalus, Guinea Pigs. They all belong to Rodentia. Then order primata. Human beings, apes, monkeys belong to order primata. The next you have order Cetacea. It includes whales and dolphins. Cetacea includes whales and dolphins. Next you have order Sirenia. It includes dugong, 
which are commonly called sea cows and trichuchus which is commonly called manatees that is aquatic carnivores belong to sirenia the next you have order perissodactyla perissodactyls are commonly called odd toed ungulates like zebra rhinoceros horse zebra rhinoceros horse as they all belong to perissodactyla next you have order archaeodactyla archaeodactyla includes even toed ungulates like cows buffalo sheep goat camel hippopotamus all of them belong to order archaeodactyla the archaeodactyla and perissodactyla both of them are put together called ungulates the next you have order carnivora carnivora includes aquatic carnivores and terrestrial carnivores aquatic carnivores are placed under pinnipeda terrestrial carnivores are placed under fissipeda aquatic carnivores are placed under pinnipeda and terrestrial carnivores are placed under fissipeda fissipeda you have tiger lion cheetah cats dogs all of them belong to fissipeda okay then pinnipeda includes aquatic carnivores like walruses belong to pinnipeda here so these are some of the important orders of class mammalia